How you doing this morning? All right, good to see you all. So glad you're in church today. And anybody glad to be in church? Love it. Can you do me another favor? Can you welcome our online audience? I want to look in the camera and say welcome. Can we give them a good hand? Those that are on watching us online. If you're here for the first time, as as Amber said, we want you to feel just right at home, like your family today. Amen. Full life. Oh boy. Okay. Amen. Full life. All right, so a couple of things that I want to remind you about that Amber mentioned. First of all, this is our last week of our 21 days of prayer and fasting, and it's been an amazing journey. Anybody enjoyed the journey of the, na- of the last 20, uh, 14, 15 days? You, you enjoyed that? So tomorrow morning, we've been doing these 7 a.m. prayer services. We've been partnering with Church of the Highlands in Birmingham, Alabama, and so we've been doing 7 a.m. Uh, prayer and worship. It's been amazing, and so if if you're available, we'd love to, to have you this week. Uh, as a matter of fact, a special treat tomorrow morning, my son Garrett and his wife Haley will be leading worship at that service, and so I'm going to be a proud dad tomorrow morning. And so I'm just so proud of them and the ministry they're doing for Christ. But you'd love for you to join us then. And then, of course, Amber mentioned Friday night. Man, I tell you what, this past Wednesday, if you were not here, you missed out. I'm telling you, we had an amazing time of prayer and worship. Amen, those of you who are here. It was awesome, and so I want to just encourage you, be here Friday night, 7 p.m. We'll celebrate what God's done in, the, in these 21 days. Also, these prayer journals that we've given you, if you want to take those, there's a prayer focus every day, and if you want to go ahead and you know, maybe catch up right now and do that this week. On the back, I really want to mention to you that there's, a, there's also an opportunity for you to tell us your story of how maybe God's been answering prayer for you. You have a testimony of any kind. There's a place on the back, this QR code. Fill that out, and we want to get your testimony. We want, to, we want other people to hear what God, how God's answering prayer. How many of you know that's encouraging to people to hear answer prayer? Amen? And so let's do that. And then also, you heard Amber mention groups coming up. I want to mention this one group. It's called Freedom. And it's not just because I lead it, but I, I feel like this is a, a group that everybody in our church needs to go through at least one time. It's called Freedom. And we're going to be leading that on Wednesdays this semester. And that semester's coming up soon. So when the directory comes out, Whatever group you want to be a part of, make sure you sign up for that. And here's what I'm looking for, that this semester of groups is going to be the most engaging we've ever had. Amen? And so let's do that. Let's get together. But I, I would love you for you to be a part of that freedom group. Okay. Well, you guys, uh, are you ready to hear God's word today? Anybody ready? Okay. Y'all going to help me this morning? Are you ready to hear God's word? Anybody ready? And so we've been in this series. We're finishing it up today called Pray First. And here's the idea. The theme kind of the underlying thing throughout is that we need to make prayer our first response, not our last resort. Everybody say that. Prayer needs to be our first response, not our... So, because many times as life gets in the way and we, we go through struggles and stuff, the only time we pray is when we get in trouble. But I want to I help you where there's never any emergencies in your life. How is that possible, Pastor? Well, if I have a lifestyle of prayer, then okay... This is coming my way, and as soon as I start getting anxious, no, you know what I'm doing? Because I, I have a personal relationship with Christ in prayer, I just give it to Him, and I keep on. Amen? So that's really what God wants for you, to make prayer your first response, not your last resort. And it's really important that we do that because of the stuff that comes our way. Would you agree? Life's hard sometimes, isn't it? And so... I just want to kind of recap for you, those of you who have not been here, in week one, we said that, you know, first of all, that we are God's kids, that we're his sons and daughters. And because we have uh, that privilege of being his kids, we have the privilege of coming to him anytime, 
anywhere? Are you glad that you can come to him anytime, anywhere? And so that's, that's the beauty of being a child of God. You're a royal priesthood. You can go to God in your car. You can go to God in your living room. You can come, to, you can come here and pray. Whatever it is, you have access to God. That's good news today. And then we said that we need to have this, this idea where we have a certain time and a certain place to pray because remember, what's, what's prayer all about? It's not a religious observance, but it's a, a place of connection, right? It's a, a relationship. And so the way I look at it is everything that's important to me, I set a schedule. I set an appointment. How many of you do that with people you love and you care about? You make appointments with them. That's what we do as, as our relationship with Christ begins to continue to unfold is that we set a certain time and a certain place. We also said that it's really important for us to, to have a, be, get creative with it, to have a plan, something that will help us to stay focused as we're praying. Maybe a prayer outline of some kind like the Lord's Prayer or the Tabernacle Prayer. Any of those will help us to stay focused because if you're like me, I tend to go, ooh. Anybody else get distracted in prayer? So all of these things will help you. And then being creative, you know, maybe switching up the place you do it or, or the, the outline you do it, it, it really gives it some freshness and keeps that freshness in your relationship. So we talked about, let's make that a priority of, of being creative with our prayers. Amen? And then we said that, that really, here's what we experience, we, the benefits of praying. Number one, we, have, we can overcome fear and anxiety. We live in an anxious society and when we pray, we can give him our cares, our anxieties, our worries in prayer. Also, it's an opportunity for you to connect with him, like we said, relationally. Let's, let's connect with God on a regular basis. And then we said that uh, it's, it's a good opportunity for you to discover your purpose. Now, there, there's two parts to prayer, right? There's me talking. And then what's the other part? Anybody know? Listening. And many times it's hard because I want to do all the talking because I got a lot of stuff I want to tell God. And we got a lot of stuff you want to tell God. But when we stop and take the moment to hear, to listen, he starts speaking to us. And we can discover our, his will, our purpose, because he knows all. Amen. So that's what we talked about. And then we said that you're, you actually can walk in the supernatural. Because, because of the, the spiritual weapon that prayer is. That your connection with God, the battle that you're fighting. How many of you know your battle is not with the person beside you or the, a person at work? Where's your battle? The scripture says our battle is in the unseen. It's in the spiritual realm. And we use spiritual weapons to fight spiritual battles. And so when you walk in prayer and you walk in worship in the word, you can actually win the, the uh, battle in the spirit realm because of your prayer. Can I get an amen today? And so what I want to do today is... In, to kind of finish this off, and I, I want to—I owe, owe you an apology. You guys are willing to accept an apology from me? Um, you guys are merciful, merciful and gracious, aren't you? So I should have preached this message probably week one, and I'll just be—I'll just kind of be transparent with you. I didn't, but uh, I, I do believe that moving forward, this will help you in your connecting with God and your your relationship. It's gonna—it's really gonna transform your relationship with Jesus. Are you ready to take the take a journey with me? Anybody ready to take that journey? And so we're going to talk today about fasting as a partnership with prayer. Now, I don't know what your teaching has been or what you've heard about fasting, but I really believe it's important for us to understand this principle of, of fasting, and here's why. Number one, fasting should be a fundamental spiritual discipline for every follower of Jesus, okay? And that, that fasting really takes your faith to, a, to the next level. All right, it, it puts you on a level that increases the effectiveness of your prayers. And here's another reason why you would want to practice uh, prayer and fasting together is, how many of you know you have freedom in Christ? Christ purchased that, but to really lay hold of that freedom that Christ has for you, prayer and fasting connected together can really take your, your, your relationship in the freedom in Christ to a new level. Here's another thing to consider that when you fast, basically what you're saying is, uh, to your body is, no. Is it hard to say no to your body? Is it hard to say no? Yes, it is. It's hard to say no to, to pizza or Buffalo Wild Wings. It's hard to say no to Netflix. Oh, okay. And so, 
you and I, when we fast, we say no to our body for a period of time and its appetite so that we can say, you know what, my eyes are off those things and on to Him. Anybody love Jesus in the room? So when you fast, it, it turns your focus on, you know, Jesus, I love you, and your spirit, man, comes alive. You're saying no to your body, you're saying no to these things, and so that you can have less of you and more of God. Didn't John say that? John the Baptist said that. He said, I want to decrease, and I want Jesus to increase. Is that anybody else's prayer today? So when you fast, that's what you're saying. I'm decreasing so that, God, you can increase in my life. And so fasting is so important because it suppresses your cravings, it it suppresses your appetites, and forces your body to yield to your spirit. And therefore, you have this space that's created for your heart to align to God's, to have this, I like it to say this divine flow between you and Him. Anybody long for that? So fasting is so important. And so I want to start with a question before we go into the scriptures. Do you ever wonder why maybe sometimes you feel like your prayers aren't being answered? I've been there. Anybody been there? Maybe you just feel like something's missing. Well, I believe maybe it could be that you haven't been adding fasting to your prayer life. So I want to give you a story of the power of fasting and the power of actually prayer and fasting together. So in Matthew chapter 17, if you'll go with me there, if you have your Bibles or it'll be on the screen, um, Jesus, his, his disciples have tried to, to heal this little boy that's, that has uh, epilepsy, he's got seizures and all that, and they, they're unable to do it. So let's read together. It says, when they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him, Lord, have mercy on my son. He said, he has seizures and is suffering greatly. He falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You unbelieving, this is what, now this is Jesus speaking. You unbelieving and perverse generate. Well, that's pretty hard words, isn't it? Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. So notice something. They were unable to to heal this little boy, right? They were unable to cast that that spirit out of him. And then Jesus points to why. What did he say? Go back to that verse. He says, you unbelieving and what? Perverse generation. So he's giving us the two problems that we have. Sometimes when we maybe we don't feel like a prayer is being answered or some things aren't happening because he says it could be that you're unbelieving, which means that you're too disconnected from God. That maybe you have neglected your time of prayer and in the Word. And because of that, you feel this disconnect. Anybody ever been there? I've been there. And so what he's saying is you don't have faith. You're unbelieving because of the disconnect. Does that make sense? Then he says you're perverse, which means you're too connected to the world. Maybe you've gotten into some habits. Maybe you've started watching some things or listening some things or hanging around some certain people that have drawn you in and you're too connected to the world. So those are two problems. We have unbelief, which means we're disconnected from God. And then we have perversion or perverse or we're we're too connected to the things of the world. That's a problem. Now, I want to ask you real quick to think about this for a second. That what things in your life would you say are keeping you from being connected to God? Maybe it's you just gotten away from praying every day or you're reading your Bible or maybe your phone. I heard somebody say the phone. And then here's the other question. What is it that's causing you to be too connected to the world? Again, it could be a phone. It could be something you're watching, hearing, whatever. And so what our, our, our goal is, maybe we can even say it now, Holy Spirit, would you shine the light of, on my life and show me 
Show me those areas where I'm too connected to the world. Show me the the areas that I'm, I'm disconnected from God. Maybe it's, I've been too busy on my job. Whatever it is, let's ask the Holy Spirit. Can we do that right now? Holy Spirit, will you just show me? Shine the light of truth on my life. Amen? So that, what? So we can be, we can solve this problem that we have of being too disconnected from God and too connected to the world. And so, how many of you know that God never leaves you in a place where you've got a problem? How I many you know he wants to solve your problems? And so later on in this, in this chapter, and we'll read it in just a second, his disciples are pretty embarrassed because they couldn't do this. Remember, he, he had empowered them. He had said, hey, go out and heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out. He would told them that, so he'd given them authority. And so why is it that they're having such a problem? And so what does he do? He says, he pulls them to the side. And here's what they say. When the, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, watch this, because of your unbelief, assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing, everybody say nothing. Nothing will be impossible for you. So he's holding out this opportunity to have faith. What's the hindrance? However, watch this, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So you see, the problem, too disconnected from God, too connected to the world, what's the remedy? Prayer and fasting. And here's what happens. When I pray, what am I doing? I'm connecting with God. There's a personal relationship that I am building with God Every time, however I do it, you know, some people like pacing, I pace when I pray. Some people kneel, whatever it is. Whatever it is, as long as you pray, amen? And so, here it is. So we, we pray to connect with God. Well, how do we do that? Well, through His Word. We, we open up His Word and we begin to, we can pray His Word we, as we're reading His Word. Every time I read God's Word, I'm getting to know God a little bit better. Amen. Every time I pray, it's an opportunity for me to connect with God relationally. And what happens is, as I do that, you know what happens to my faith? It, I heard, it, heard it, somebody said it increases. It rises, doesn't it? My faith rises every time I spend time with God. It's just like me and my staff here, my team. The more time I spend with them, praying, planning, communicating, strategizing, whatever. The more time I spend with them, the greater my confidence is in them. Does that make sense? And so it's the same is true with God. The more time I spend with him, I, I notice he, he answers my prayers, he hears me, and then my confidence in him grows. And what happens, therefore, my connection with God, there's this divine connection, Tony, that nothing, nothing can take can take it away, amen, as long as I am connected to him, right? Then the second part is, I'm too connected to the world. So what does fasting do? Disconnects me from the world. Remember, life has temptations, it has distractions. All these things are calling for your attention. And when we give in to them, these appetites, it just pulls us a little closer to the world and a little further away from God. So fasting is this, this remedy. Now it's not, you know, the goal of fasting is not to, you know, to starve you to death or whatever. It's actually the opportunity for you to put those things of the flesh away. Abstain from something you love for a while. Like I said, pizza or wings or Netflix, whatever it is, so that your spirit man begins to connect with God. You're saying no to your body for a season so that your spirit man becomes alive. Amen. How many of you want that? I want my spirit man alive. I want to be able to connect because that's the part of me that connects with God. Amen. Your body, your soul, all of it is, is there for you to have a relationship with Christ. But the thing that really, really quickens the relationship is your spirit man. Y'all with me? Okay. And so... 
as we're doing this, as we're suppressing our flesh, starving our flesh, our spirit comes alive. And it gets stronger. Here's how Paul describes it in Romans 8. He said, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by, it, by its dictates, you will die. Remember, all that stuff leads to spiritual death, right? We're moving away from spiritual death, right? But if through the power of the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, what does it say? You live. You'll live the full life, right? Christ promised. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Isn't that beautiful? Because remember, you, as a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit on the inside. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit. And when you let Him lead, what does He bring? Here's how I like to say it. He's a breath of fresh air. And when he, when he breathes on something, guess what? It comes alive. Anybody want that, folks? Anybody just want to be alive? How many of you want to be alive? Say amen. All right. And so this is, this is the remedy. If you're too disconnected from God, what's the solution? Say it loud. If you're too, dis, if you're too connected to the world, what's your, what's your solution? There you go. You're, you guys are smart. So... The Bible has a lot to say about fasting. If you read through the Bible, you know that Daniel fasted. Uh, you know that uh, all the Old Testament figures, they fasted. And then when on the day of Pentecost, you guys are familiar with Acts chapter 2, right? Where the Bible says, Jesus promised, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost was the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out. And the Holy Spirit, you know, before he would just kind of move in somebody's life. And then he would almost like, almost like he was... Here and there, disappearing. But the moment the day of Pentecost came, the Bible says we are filled with His Spirit and He's always there. Amen. And it's also the day that the church, as we know it, was birthed. And if you read the book of Acts, you know it was a powerful church. People were getting saved. People were being healed. Miracles were happening all over the place. And you know what was part of their routine? Their spiritual discipline? Prayer and fasting. But I want to read to you out of Matthew. But this is, this is actually before Jesus, uh, obviously he's still doing his ministry. And so I want you to read this with me. It says, Then John's disciples came and asked him, How is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he's with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them and they will fast. What's he saying? First of all, he's declaring himself the bridegroom, right? Remember, he has a church. The church is called the bride of Christ. And he's coming, returning one day for his bride. Amen? And so he said, listen, while you're at a wedding, how many of you have ever fasted at a wedding? That's absurd, isn't it? No, you're, what are you doing? You're actually doing the opposite. Some of you are chowing down, baby. You're feasting. Why? Because the bridegroom is present. But he said, I'm going to go away. And when I go away, that's when this idea of fasting will kick in. And that's exactly what happened. The book of Acts, the church began to fast and pray because Jesus endorsed it. He said, this is going to be your discipline as a church when I go away. You're going to pray and you're going to fast. Let me show you in the book of Acts, chapter 13. It says, while they were worshiping the Lord, they were doing what you and I are doing today. Amen. And they were what? It says, fasting. The Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. Watch this. So after they had and they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So before, in the early church, before they ever made a decision, a crucial decision, what did they do? They prayed and they fasted. There's some good advice for you. There's some clarity that comes when you pray and fast. Can I tell you a story about my own life in, in, in concerning this? You guys, you want to hear a story about that? Say yes if you do. If you don't, then okay. So, Lori and I, my, I've been in ministry for 25 years. And Lori and I started out 
we were doing worship ministry for 16. The, fir- the first 16 years of my life, I did worship. And we were in a church, uh, before we moved to Canton, we, we were in a church in Statesboro, Georgia. Anybody know where Statesboro is? Go Eagles, Georgia Southern. And so we were there. We loved that place. It was a great church, had great friends, and we had settled in. We were there about five and a half years. And in 2004, of August or September, I can't remember exactly, August or September of 2004, I was sitting in a Wednesday night at the, at the church there. And during the message that, was, that we watched a video of a, me, a message being preached, I began to feel the Holy Spirit say, your time here is about up. And so I kind of, okay, okay, God. Kind of put it on the back burner. Didn't dismiss it, but, you know, here it is. So December of that year rolls around. It's my birthday, December 30th. And I'm, by the way, December 30th. Just kidding. I'm sitting in my office and I felt the Holy Spirit say, you need to fast. So I started that day, I think it was day or the next day. And so that next Sunday, the, the first Sunday in January, we started a series of revival meetings, camp meeting. We called it, I, can't, I think we called it camp meeting, whatever. And so this, they brought, we brought in a guest speaker. And the first night, this guy preached. He, had, he read the exact same text. Different guy, and, and basically the same message that I'd heard back in August. Folks, that got my attention. And so I'm like, mm-hmm, okay, God. And then the next night in a sermon, he says this. He says, some of you are going to have to step out on faith and leave the people you love. I was like, okay, God. I hear you. So long story short, I asked Lori about it. I'm like, Lori, I just want to confirm. Lori, how are you feeling? Yes, I believe it's time for us to move on. And so, long story short, we moved to Canton, Georgia. Spent four and a half years at New Life Church, and then God brought us here in 2010. What's the point? When you fast and you pray, there's clarity. God speaks so clearly. Amen? Is he a respecter of persons? If he'll speak to me that way, if he'll lead me and guide me that way, he'll do the same for you. Amen? Does that help anybody today? So there's a clarity that comes when we fast and we pray. And it was a, it was a primary responsibility of the early church. It was something that they made a priority. Even Paul, who was the, the writer of most of the New Testament, made, made fasting a habit. As a matter of fact, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 says this, In weariness and toil and sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst, and fastings often in cold and nakedness. What is he saying? He's saying fasting is a part of my lifestyle. And so we see examples in the Word how important it is to fast. And so maybe you would say, well, you know, what is, what is it that I want to get out of fasting? Why should I fast? Well, let me ask you some questions. Anybody need a miracle or healing? Anybody need an, a fresh encounter with God in your life? Anybody have a dream inside? You know it's so much bigger than you that the only way it's going to be accomplished is if God makes it happen. Anybody have a desire for a deeper, more intimate, powerful relationship with God? Are you ready for maybe just a heightened sensitivity to to be able to hear God's voice a little better and know exactly what He wants for your life? Some of you may be battling a sin of some kind, a bondage, an addiction, that you're just you're you're sick and tired of it ruling your life. Anybody there? Do you have a friend or a loved one who's far from God who needs salvation? We all have that, right? Or do you just need to know what God's will is for your life? You need you need some clarity on some next steps. I have good news for you. This idea of prayer and fasting presents an opportunity for you to lay hold of all those questions I just asked you. And I, as a matter of fact, I believe God wants to do those things for you if you'll lean in to prayer and fasting. Can I get an amen today? And so this, these are the realities. The practical help that I want to give you is, first of all, search your heart. Why are you fasting? What's your motive for fasting? You know, it's not like the, uh, the Pharisees, the legal people, the the law people in the, in the New Testament who they would fast and they would let everybody know they're fasting, right? 
Oh, they would go around, oh, I'm so holy. That's not God want, what, what He wants for you, amen? As a matter of fact, He says, if, when you're fasting, wash your face. Don't even really let people know. Now, we do corporate fasting, so we let people know some things that we can fast, but really and truly, we don't need to go around praying about it, right? Because if our motive's wrong, it doesn't do us any good. And so I want to give you some practical here. Number one, set an objective. Now, I know, again, maybe you're just joining us and you want to, the next six days, maybe you can join us in these fasts and just figure out what it is that you want to experience through the fast. God, what do, you, what do you want to say to me? What clarity do I need as I'm praying and fasting? Number two, declare your dependence on God. Can anybody say that right now? God, I need you. I need him. How many of you need him? I need him. I'm just not smart enough, folks. I'm not, I'm not talented enough. I need him. Can anybody say amen today? Not to the fact that it's just me. It's you too. I need him. Ask forgiveness. If there's anything in your life that you need to get right with him, Lord, forgive me. I confess my sin. I need you. And so we confess. We ask for forgiveness. And then we, we recalibrate. There's, maybe there's some things we've been focused on, you know, those things of the world that we've been so enamored with that God says, no, let's turn our attention back to him. That really happens a lot in the Christmas season, doesn't it? We get so busy, we be, get caught up in buying gifts and and, and eating, and we just, sometimes we need some recalibration. That's what's good about the first of the year. That's good about prayer and fasting the first of the year. We can recalibrate, refocus on the things that are really important, the eternal. And we say, Holy Spirit, we invite your presence into our lives. We need your presence, oh God. Is that anybody else's prayer today? I need your presence. There's nothing like the presence of God, amen? In His presence, we read this in January, I mean in December, is fullness of joy. Anybody want His presence? And then believe Him for the answers. Believe, have faith that when, he, when you pray and you fast, He's hearing and He's going to answer, amen? He says it, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, what is he going to do? He's going to hear from heaven. He's going to forgive your sin. He's going to heal your land. Amen. That's the promise in his word. And so set the objective. What is it you want to experience? Do all those things. And then you, obviously you can decide what to fast. There's, a, there's many different kinds of fast in the Bible, right? There are some that are total, like some people do a total fast where they don't, all they do is drink water and maybe some light juice, and they push the, the food away altogether. And then there's the, the partial fast, where you can do like maybe a meal or a day or, or two meals a day. Whatever it is, you're fasting. It's just, it's, it's kind of partial. And then there's the selective fast, where like there's, a, there's what we call a Daniel fast. If you guys are familiar with Daniel, you know the story of Daniel. The Bible says that he for 21 days, laid aside meats and sweets. He, drank, he ate and drank, ate water and just, uh, ate water, okay. Drank water and ate vegetables. That's all he did for 21 days. And so then there's this, what we call a soul fast, where, you know, you're not watching Netflix. You're not listening to the news. We could afford not to listen to the news sometimes, right? Anything like that that would we kind of cloud our minds. We're going to fast. And so you make a decision which one you're going to do. You pray about it. Nobody's telling you what to do or how to do it. You're just, that's, that's between you and God. Amen? And then lastly, what can you expect? You can expect results when you pray and fast. Amen? So there's a passage in Isaiah 58, and the whole chapter is about fasting. But then he says this. He says, I want you to see what the results will be if you'll Commit yourself to prayer and fasting. Isaiah 58, it says, Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your what? Healing. Everybody say healing. Will come quickly, or quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. The next verse. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he'll say, Here am I. Aren't you glad that you're... The Lord says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So that when you pray, you know what he's doing? He's waiting. 
It's an opportunity for you because that's what he wants to do. He is waiting on you. Let's say, let's say you missed prayer for five or six days. You know what? He's not, he's not ready to beat you over the head. You know what he's saying? I missed you. I've missed my time with you. And so when, he, when you come back to him, it's like, oh, welcome back. I love you. This is what prayer and fasting will do. It will connect you to God so much that you can expect these results. Number one, you can expect healing. Anybody have a broken relationship? Anybody have a, a physical need that you need healing for? When you fast and pray, you can expect that God's going to bring healing. Amen. Number two, righteousness. It doesn't mean you're perfect. All it means is that same thing, that recalibration. Maybe you have been, maybe you've wandered off and you're, you're headed the wrong direction and all it is is you've, you've changed and you've gotten it back on the right path. That's what that righteousness is. And I'm so glad, aren't you glad that you're clothed in the righteousness of God? That that's what Jesus accomplished for you on the cross. Number three, help. This connecting from the world by fasting enables you to receive the blessing and favor of God. God wants to bless you, amen? You're his kid. And so he wants to favor you. He wants to bless you. And so when you fast and pray, your eyes are open. There's a new lens that you're looking through. There's clarity that you have to see your life and relationships from a different point of view. That relationship that was so hard for you and difficult for you, now you know what? You can resolve it because you have clarity. You're looking through God's lens. That obstacle, that problem at work, now you have clarity. Oh, that's how I need to solve it. Amen. He's come to help. Amen. So what's your response today? Number one, acknowledge. Acknowledge that many times you're disconnected. You just, it just happens, doesn't it? Acknowledge that there's sometimes that you're just too connected to the world and God's saying, come back. And so what you do is to reverse that, you make prayer and fasting a lifestyle. That's how you reconnect with God and you disconnect from the world through your prayer and fasting. And then lastly, acknowledge that when you do, you can expect Him to heal, to bring you into righteousness and for him to help. Does that help anybody today? So in 2023, a few, few weeks ago, I was praying. And I felt like God said that this year for Full Life Church, it's going to be a year of strong faith. Amen? And you know what? I, I read this. I ran across this passage in Acts 16, 5. It says, talking about the church. And the church was strengthened in faith, and they grew daily. How many of you want to grow? Strengthen your faith and you'll grow. Well, how do I do that, Pastor? Well, prayer. We're grounded on the Word. His Word is powerful. Romans 2, 10, 17 says this. And how, how does your faith increase? Through hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the Word of God. And then I felt like the, the, these three things, this Prayer and fasting, being grounded on the Word, and then passionate worship. How many know God loves worship? How many know we serve a great God? He's magn magnificent and holy and righteous and gracious and merciful. He's our provider. All those things. So when we acknowledge that and we worship Him, you know what happens? We grow. Our faith is strong. How many want that for this year? That's my declaration over our church this year. So if that's Thank you for joining us for this week's service. We pray that God has used this moment to greatly impact your life. We invite you to live fully alive in Christ with us here at Full Life Church. We'll see you next week.